Welcome back, guys. Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we're bringing you back to the uh, multicharts.net uh, video tutorial series that we've been working on. And uh, today we have a very short video, a very easy one to present, uh, how to add technical indicators and studies onto a chart, a very common question that we come across on a day-to-day -day basis here at the help desk. Uh, so it's a very simple procedure. We're going to show you exactly how to do that step by step. Uh, so uh, hopefully you're able to gain a lot of information from what we're able to show you in today's presentation. So let's get right into it. We're going to go ahead and bring up a chart and let's just blow up the chart to make it full screen so uh, it looks a little more uh, proper scale for the, for the video. And uh, we have a mini Nikkei contract at the moment on the chart. All right, so uh, this is a contract that trades on the Yasaka Exchange. Uh, market opened about just over two hours ago. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to right click on the chart to access the menu option for the chart uh, within multicharts.net. All right, so that's what the menu option looks like. The next step is we're going to locate a menu option that says insert study. So we're going to go and you can see it's right here. We're going to left click. And uh, give it a couple seconds. Uh, I do apologize. My computer is running a little slow. I'm, I'm running a, a bunch of different processes at the same time on my other monitor screen. Uh, so I'm using a lot of my memory usage on my computer here. Uh, so I do apologize for that. So what happens is when you bring up the insert study dialog box, you have three menu tabs at the top here. You have indicator, you have signals, and you have add-ons. All right, so the main, ones that you, the main one you want to worry about is indicator. The signals and add-ons, uh, we'll get to that later when we start recording more videos uh, about this, these particular functions. But this, in a nutshell, the add-ons is really if you, if you go out there, if there's a third-party developer uh, that's created a custom indicator that works with multicharts, multicharts.net, you can program indicators using C-sharp or Visual Basic's coding, coding language. All right, so if you have a, a developer out there that's created a proprietary product that he wants to license out to you, so you'd have to pay him or her, then you would then receive the file and you would have to import it into multicharts and therefore it would be accessible on the add-ons tab. Now the signals tab is, is specific for automated trading. So uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, I won't get too deep into this right now, but this is for if you want to use a common indicator such as Bollinger Bands, but you want to automate the signal. So if you're using a moving average, for example, and when that moving average crosses, you still have to click the buy or sell button to execute the trade manually. The signals tab allows you to use a common indicator such as a moving average and automate that signal. So, or automate that indicator. So if the, the moving average meets the criteria, the variable inputs that you implement, it'll automatically execute the trade uh, based on the conditions that you have set. So, and that, you don't have to code. It's pretty much cookie cutter. It's already pre-built for you. You just basically got to plug and play and just type in the values and then just fire it off. For now, we're going to stay away from that. We're just, we're focusing specifically on indicators. So you want to make sure you're on the indicator tab. That's the main point that I'm trying to make. All right, so now the next step is identifying the indicator that you want to add. So there's quite a few. There's indicators. They're all in alphabetical order. You can see them A through Z. Now, one thing I want to point out, if you scroll down the list as I am now, you could see that I'm going to get to a point where you're going to see all these indicators that are labeled VB in front of it. If you notice the first VB indicator, which is the chart toolbar example, if I scroll to the very top, that's the first indicator in the list as well. So if you notice, it will be in the same exact order once you get to the VB section from top to bottom. And the only difference, it's not that the indicator behaves differently. It's the same exact indicator. It's just utilizing a different code. So if you don't see VB, that's a C-sharp coded indicator. If you see VB, that means that that indicator was, was created in Visual Basic coding language instead. All right, so it, it's up to you if you want to run the, the old uh, you know, Pepsi Coke challenge. You can run both of them on the chart and see which one runs better in terms of efficiency. Uh, that might, uh, you know, the way that the code works might play a factor in how those indicators are plotting. Uh, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not a coder myself. So the best way to test it is run both of them on a chart and just see how it works out. But that's the only difference. That's the only reason why you see VB versus the other indicators that are listed. All right, for now, I'm just going to work off the, the normal indicators. So let's go ahead and add a basic indicator, for example, Bollinger Bands. All right, so you're going to locate the indicator that you want to add. You're going to left click to highlight it as you can see that it's highlighted. And then the next step is you want to go ahead and click OK. All right, once we click OK, what's going to happen is it's going to bring up the dialog box for me to enter the input values of the indicator. All right, so uh, this is a mistake. Let me go ahead and just re remove this for now. That was uh, one of the Bollinger Bands indicators that I was trying to implement uh, for the signals. All right, so let me go back real quick. All right, so that's what the, let's start from scratch. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to right click on the chart, go to Insert Study. 
and then we're gonna go right back to Bollinger Bands and we're gonna click OK. So that's where we left off. And that's the first thing you're gonna see. It's gonna ask you what input values do you wanna use for this Bollinger Bands indicator. That's on the inputs uh, tab that you can see at the top there. So you have additional tabs, style, property, scaling, and alerts. So if you wanna change the input values, just simply left click in any of those windows that you can see that you can change the variables for and you'll see that that number will highlight and the next step is just simply typing in the value that you want to implement. All right, so we'll leave everything as is. That's pretty straightforward. It shouldn't uh, take too much explanation on what you need to do here other than just changing your values based on your trading preference. The style tab is going to give you the ability to change how that indicator is going to be displayed on the chart. So by default, those are the colors that are used, yellow, blue, and gray. You can see the style and weight. Style is basically do you want a solid line, do you want a broken line? Uh, of course, colors, self-explanatory, do you want to change the colors? And then the weight will be how thick do you want the indicator to be displayed. And then the markers, the markers, what happens is when you add any indicator onto a chart, it will give you an indication of the, the marker values on the right side price panel. So let me go ahead and add the indicator real quick by clicking OK. And then now you can see the indicator has been added. So you can see with the white background, the, the yellow Bollinger Band, is, is it kind of blends in a little bit with the white background, so it's kind of hard to see it. So maybe I want to change that color up. So if you notice, these are the market values, and also it's very hard to see the yellow marker on the right side price panel because of the white background. So let's, this would be a good example if you want to change that yellow indicator there. Just left click on the indicator. When you left click on the indicator, you can see a bunch of black box displays, which is letting you know that the indicator has been selected. And now you're going to want to right click on any of those squares, and you're going to want to either go to, you want to go to format Bollinger Bands in this case, since we want to go ahead and change the color of that yellow Bollinger Band. So we're going to click on the Style tab, and now I can click on the yellow color template and I can change that to orange. And now you can see that's a much more noticeable comparative to the yellow, ba uh, yellow Bollinger Band that we had initially. And I can increase the weight. So you see if I do that, it thickens up that line a bit. All right, so the Style tab is pretty much just going to allow you to modify the way the indicator is going to look on the chart itself. The Properties tab, this, this is going to give you the ability to, uh, to show you know, where you want the indicator to be displayed. So right now it's, it's created as a regular subchart. On, on, it's basically overlaying the indicators over the candles themselves. Uh, sometimes uh, traders have different preferences on how they want the indicators to be displayed. So if you want the indicator to be displayed as an overlaying indicator, as it is right now over the candles, then that's subchart number one. If you click Show on bottom, however, you can then have the indicator show as a subchart, it actually creates a secondary chart where the Bollinger Bands are separate from the chart altogether, and you can see now it's visible on the bottom half of the chart versus overlaying the candles themselves. All right, so if I want to re revert it back to the way it was, I'm going to left-click on the indicator. You can see those black box displays reappear. Right-click with your mouse over the black box, go to Format Bollinger Bands, and then we're just going to go right back to subchart number one, and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and now you can see it's back to the default setting, which is basically an overlaying indicator over the candles. All right, so that's really what the properties menu is going to allow you to do. It's going to allow you to plot the indicator based on what region of the chart you want it displayed, whether you want it as a subchart, as an overlaying indicator over the chart. So it's all personal preference. You can even have it on the top if you want, uh, which is shown on top there. All right, now this base study on is kind of cool. This is uh, if you have multiple intervals within a chart. I haven't covered that uh, just yet. Uh, that might be the next video that I'm going to create. What I mean is, uh, let me show you a quick demo. So right now I'm using a one-minute mini Nikkei contract chart. But what if I want to be able to plot multiple time frames off one chart, but have, or one symbol but multiple time frames, but all have it on one chart? So what we can do is we can right-click on the chart. And I won't get too in detail on how to do this because I want to save this for a different segment. But I do want to show you the point that I'm trying to make. Uh, from the property section within the indicator. So let me go ahead and just add real quick another interval within the chart. And I'm going to show you what that, that, that particular setting will do and how you can use it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and change. So we're already using a one-minute chart. Let's change this to a five-minute chart instead. All right, and we'll actually add the, uh, the, the same contract. So we'll do MJ NKM16, which is the, the mini NK contract. We'll make sure it's a five-minute chart as is. All right, we're going to click OK. And then what you're going to see is you're going to see two charts. So now you can see there's a five-minute time frame and there's also a one-minute time frame. So I have two charts on one chart. So two symbols, one symbol, two different time frames on one chart. So you see a five-minute time frame, one-minute time frame. So going back to the indicator now, if I right-click or left-click on the indicator and right-click and go to Format Bollinger Bands, going back to the Properties menu, now you can base the study off the five-minute time frame instead. 
So that's what that allows you to do. So when you have multiple time frames on one chart, you can click the drop down menu, it'll show you all the different time frames that you have on the chart, and then you're gonna be able to show, you know, choose which time frame you want the indicator to base the study on. All right, so that's what that properties tab is gonna allow you to do. Um, you can auto detect number of bars, study will reference basically how much the historical data is on your chart, or you can, you can actually have user specified. So if you want that set to 50 bars, you can go ahead and do that or change the value. I typically leave it on auto detect so it'll automatically calculate how much data range I have selected. And then, mo and then you have other options that you can check or uncheck whether you want it to update on every tick. For the most part, this stuff is pretty straightforward. You're just gonna, I usually leave them checked. I don't mess around with it, but everybody has their own preference. So you have those options. The scaling is gonna, say, similar to what I explained in format uh, instruments, uh, when you go to create a chart, uh, it's gonna allow you to change the scaling of how the indicator is displayed on the chart itself. So if you wanna compress it or expand it, or maybe perhaps you wanna change the, uh, the, the marker range. So therefore you can, same concept, you're gonna compress it or de expand it. Uh, you can use the different variables, whether it's user defined, you can set the maximum and minimums. So you're gonna to wanna to play around with those settings and see what works best for you. For the most part, I usually just leave it on screen and uh, the default settings are fine just for myself. And I just kind of play around with the uh, increase and decrease bar spacing to find the right, uh, the right settings. But of course, you have the ability to, to customize it on the scaling tab. And then the alerts tab allows you to set audio alerts for the indicators. Now the indicators, the audio alerts will be based on the pre-built conditions. You can't uh, create conditions or anything. I mean, you can create conditions outside of the pre-built conditions that are available to you. However, if you decide to do that, uh, that does require coding. So you're gonna need to know how to code in either C-sharp or visualbasics.net. If you wanna cre create more of a contingent alert uh, outside of the pre-built conditions that you see here. So what I mean is enable alerts. Alert conditions will only check on bar close every tick or once per bar. So if you wanna do anything outside of those three selections, you're gonna have to code. All right, so this is very straightforward, just cookie cutter. Uh, what you see is what you can use. You can set audio alerts, you can customize. If you have certain WAV files on your computers, you can go in and import them if you wish or you can set email alerts as well. All right, so I won't spend too much time on the alerts. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you're just gonna go in there and either import a custom WAV file or you're gonna set your email alerts accordingly. And uh, that will give you the ability to use simple indicator alerts. And other than that, that's pretty much how, do you, how you add the indicator. It's very simple. Again, it's right clicking on the chart, insert study, locate the indicator within the list, left click to highlight the indicator. And then once you've identified the indicator that you wanna add, simply click okay to add it and then set your valuables or variables, and then once you do that, click OK, and that's gonna add the indicator right onto the chart. And of course, if you wanna remove the indicator, you can left click on the indicator. Um, you can, there's two ways of doing it. You can either right click on the chart, remove all studies, or you can left click directly on the indicator if you're trying to delete a specific indicator, and then just right click on one of those black squares and, and remove study, and hit yes. And this concludes uh, the short video presentation on how to add a technical indicator or study within multicharts.net. Uh, the next video, I'm gonna actually show you how to create indicator templates. This gives you the ability to create a series of different indicators, make your chart look exactly the way that you want with those indicators, and save that layout so you don't have to go through all that work uh, again when you create a new chart. Thank you for your time, guys. We'll see you next time.